Welcome. This is the Quiz the Music Man podcast. My name's Tony Underwood. I am the Music Man. And uh, we talk about all things music. I uh, answer questions. We talk a little bit about music news. And I usually have a uh, little bit of uh, talk about uh, music development or career development or maybe just life development. Uh, most of the things we teach, I own a music school. I've been involved in music most of my life. Uh, played, performed, written, uh, marketed, sold, directed, you name it, I've done it. And uh, we uh, talk about all that. Uh, I give you my uh, my slant on things. It might be wrong, might be right. Uh, it's my opinion. I usually base it on fact. Uh, but uh, you're welcome to uh, send me some information, uh, uh, send me some comments, let me know what you think. And today we are going to uh, talk about dreamers and doers. Uh, coin a phrase that Disney uses. I don't think they own that phrase, but uh, if they do, uh, s sorry to uh, get onto your copyright. Uh, but before we do that, we're just going to scroll through some music news. And uh, this is both a, uh, a podcast and a video uh, recording. So if you hear me say something that pertains to a video and you're just listening, or uh, if you hear me say something, or if I say something pertaining to a uh, uh, audio and you're on video, uh, please bear with me there. I'll try to uh, make sure everybody understands what's going on. So in music news, Devo gets their own holiday. Uh, Devo, the band, if you don't know who Devo is, uh, I would Google them. They're back from the olden times. I remember them when I was a a young lad. They are getting their own uh, holiday, uh, and the quote here is, quote, we are and will continue to be immensely proud of, to be the home of Devo, and we'll be rallying this great community to help them achieve the recognition they deserve. End quote. That's Akron, Ohio Mayor Dan Horrigan. So Devo is getting uh, their, probably their best known song is called Whip It, and uh, Back in the olden days, they used to do these things called music videos, and it was played by, uh, started in the 80s uh, by a uh, company called Music Television, or MTV, which today is mostly just ridiculousness and deliciousness and other things of that, which is okay. But uh, uh, they used to be just total music videos, pretty much like you'd watch YouTube. And uh, they spent lots and lots of money. They spent hundreds of thousands of dollars. Most of the film directors started in super lavish music videos. Millions of dollars they would spend uh, until they realized some kid, uh, you know, took a picture of himself pouring cream corn on himself and uh, singing a song and put it on YouTube and uh, got, you know, 50 million views and made tens of thousands of dollars off of it, made it for nothing, a can of cream corn or whatever. But regardless, Google Devo, they're a good band. Uh, let's see what we, Garbage announced a new album, No Gods, No Masters. So if you're into garbage, that's the name of the group. Uh, Ariana Grande will be a coach on The Voice season 21. That should be interesting about that. Maybe she'll lick some donuts. I don't know. That's... Uh, I'm not trying to be mean. It's just funny. Uh, you know, the youngsters. Uh, <laughs> we all do crazy things. Justin Bieber, if you're a believer, I'm a believer. The Biebs scores his first number one on the Artist's 500 chart. He's reached number one on the Rolling Stone Artist's 500 chart for his first time following the arrival of his new album, Justice. The pop star jumped from number 22 to the top spot, pulling in 173.1 million streams. Now, if you were an independent artist, you might get six grand per million. So you would get uh, 60, uh, $100,000 maybe from that for a month. That's not bad. Uh, although an independent artist would have a tough time doing that without the record label. Uh, and with the record label, we don't know if he made any money or not. But that's just, a, that's another story. But that's good. Congratulations to the Beaver. He needs some help sometimes. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a lot of good stuff going on. But a lot of this uh, 
cream prep first vinyl release of live at the forum from 1968 farewell run so if you know what that's all about uh, jamie sullivan performs pick up your feelings on jimmy kimmel kimmel's good jasmine sullivan's pretty good too give that a listen all right let's talk a little bit of people have asked me about how we listen to stuff in the olden times so let's just go through some even before me the super olden times we'll refer to this as the ancient times uh, there was no recording there was no way to hear somebody unless you were there if you've ever seen a crazy opera on tv let me tell you the original operas were mad they went for hours people came and go as they went there were huge fights in this uh, audience and people bring food and they would camp out and it was just a it was almost like Coachella or something like that and uh, 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 the people who were the most could hear the most because there was no amplification uh, were the castrati that was men who uh, uh, had certain things removed from their body that they never went through a change and their voice never got lower and they could screech uh, so into soprano range. And, and plus, of course, most men's vocal boxes are bigger than women's. So it's just they could really reach out there. Uh, so the first really uh, way to hear someone, except in a big uh, surrounding, they would just put horns, a big horn out, a hollow horn. You've ever seen a megaphone? They sell them at some uh games it's just a uh, like a funnel and it does not electrified you just shout into it but it reflects your sound they would put huge horns out both for them to sing into and then people would put them up to their ears and in the olden days before they had hearing aids it was like a little curved horn you people hold it into their ear so they could hear you uh, then uh, thomas edison uh, is credited with inventing the phonograph uh, which was a tube Kind of like this water bottle here and it just rolled and there was a little there were grooves and there's a little needle and like a little looked like little mountains microscopic and that needle would jump that needle would then uh turn a drum kind of like your eardrum and it would be electrified maybe or sometimes it wasn't there was just a horn coming out from that needle and you could hear it would press that record uh press it into plastic or wax they started with and um Edison invented this and, and knew it would was a flop. What are they going to do with it? The, the only thing he could think of was to record someone's dying words. Uh, but of course, uh, it, it, people started doing music with it. And then they came into a flat plate, which you know what a LP looks like, a, a record they call it. It's made out of uh, substance vinyl. It's a plastic and the grooves go round and round. And they used to be all different sizes. They're coming back. Most kids know what they are. You go to Target. And the first real star um, was uh, a Caruso, which he was a tenor. And he uh, would go in. Now, it's tough to get a good recording these days. But if you can imagine, there were no sound booths. So what they did is he would meet people in a hotel. And RCA, this guy, wanted to record him singing. And they brought in the recording and set it up in a hotel room. And they didn't have room for percussion, so they had a guy on a typewriter, a mechanical typewriter. If you know what that is, Google it. It's a machine that you would press a key and a little hand would smack into the paper, would smack into some ink first, an ink uh, strip of cloth, and it would smack into it. It had a letter on it. It would smack that ink letter onto the page, and then you'd press the next button and smack, and that's how you would type much like we type on these things but it was a mechanical thing and they made a noise ch -ch 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 -ch, and so forth and uh because they couldn't uh, fit the drummers in there there was a guy on a typewriter and if you listen to the early songs he's ch -ch 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 -ch. that's you know how he did it uh but caruso would go in turn it on he would sing a song they would cut him a check and he would leave there was no takes there was no two or three takes he did the whole thing from beginning to end. He rarely did it twice because it was expensive. Uh, you had, I think at the time you were actually cutting into wax and then they would take that wax and they would make a, uh, a copy of it to press either harder wax or plastic. I think he actually was on the rolls at first and then went. And 
Since so few people got an opportunity to hear a singer, especially of his caliber, there was very few like him. The power, they were un, they were not ready for the power and the uh, just the way his voice would push your buttons because you've never experienced it. It's a very sen sensory thing. I teach music and sometimes people will hit a note and they'll just run screaming from the room because it never felt like that before. They can't, uh, they can't reconcile it. They can't compute it. They just can't uh, understand it. And hearing it is the same way as well. And he was uh, by far the most popular, probably the most popular person on earth because people could hear him. And they would come in throngs to his uh, uh, uh Concerts, and I think they eventually had some type of amplification, whether it was horns or electrical. Later, electri electrical, it was just using a magnet. So in other words, one magnet would receive the signal, and then it would transfer it to a much huger magnet connected to some paper. And as it made a vibration, that paper would reproduce the sounds. What we, what we have today, even the ear, uh, ear, ear pods and, and things have that tiny, Thing. It's of course right to your ear and your speaker in your home. It does the same thing or your sound bar, maybe under your TV. It's just a speaker and they call the sound bar, but uh, it actually moves air, which is how sound is. It's vibration, it vibrates air and then it gets into your ear, which is kind of a speaker in reverse. You have a flat drum, a head, a bunch of little bones. And then this organ, the, the cochlea that's filled with fluid, it helps you balance as well. It receives those signals and then sends them to your brain as, as we know, sound. Uh, so that's how that worked. Anyway, so we had the records first. And that went on from probably the, I think it was the, the late 1800s, uh, all the way through, uh, I think it was the, the, the late 70s and early, early 80s. Now, they also had what you call a cassette tape, which was a strip of tape with a magnetic uh, film that could be magnetized. And they had heads that would take the sound and magnetize it. And you could put it in a player that reproduced that. Well, cassette tapes were a little small thing, smaller than your phone. They had reel-to-reel, -reel, which was big reels of tapes, uh, real thick, so they could get a lot of information. They could do movies and things. They uh, also had what's called an eight track. And an eight track was a, just a loop of tape. It, it looped all on itself and it was in this little, little bit bigger box. And the cool thing was you could uh, just uh, plug it in, you shoved it into the player and it would play on a loop. You never had to go back and forth. Cassette tapes, you would have to turn around at first. Later cassettes would go back, they would just click and go the other way. But the eight track went on and on, they were cheap. Uh, they could have very good sound quality, but the players they made, and they made them so cheaply, they were pretty awful, but they were kind of neat to be able to listen to sound and to take it with you. Uh, then the big change came with the CD. Well, you know what a CD is. They used to be a certificate of deposit. That's an investment in your banker, but it's the little disc, a compact disc, uh, and uh, that kind of took over uh, for a while. They shot themselves in the foot because LPs were about eight bucks, I think, and get 20 songs on there. And the first CDs, I don't think they put that many songs on it. And they charge you 15, 16 bucks, 20 bucks, and people stop playing it. But then the big revolution came when uh, you could just download an MP3 file or some file. Now, an MP3 is not a good file. It takes away so much of the music, but it's, it was cheap, it was easy, and it was a format everybody had because they used it for other things. On these new devices called personal computers. <laughs> Didn't have cell phones back then that you could do smartphones. Uh, but this was also around the 80s uh, and into the 90s, and then you had place, people like Napster who was having people share songs, which is illegal. It's like going and getting a copy of a book and paying $10 for it and go printing a million of them up and giving them away. Uh, but people did it anyway, and they shot themselves in the foot again because they could have bought Napster and just said, hey, everybody, if you'll pay me $10 a month, I'll let you take all the songs we've got forever. $10 a month. Of course, that's what somebody eventually did with Spotify and those kind of things. Uh, and that's kind of where we are. We're back to uh, where people listen over their device. The smartphone and smart devices have made that a whole different thing. 
Uh, so you just stream stuff and you don't you used to could physically buy the file and keep it. And some people do that, but most don't. But records are coming back and the vinyl records. And I'll tell you why you get together and go to Target or Walmart or wherever or the record store. And you go get that and it's in. It's not there, but it's in today. Oh, man. And there's a limited number and it's a physical thing. and It's big. So you've got a good picture on the front and you break that wrapper off and you smell it and you pull out that record and there's a sleeve and the sleeve might have uh, lyrics on it or backstage pictures or stories they tell. There might be a poster in there. There might be some like a comic book or a book or a guide or something. Or you take the record out and you can see those grooves and you put it on the platter. You start it and you put the little needle. You can feel it and hear that needle go in and make that uh, music. It's a physical thing. People love records. That's why they were so popular. And uh, I think they're going to, they for the first time, the last few years, I think they've outsold CDs. And I think it's a very big growing market. Most independent artists, that's a great way to make money. Go ahead and just make you up some, even if it's just 50 or 100, do it. People will buy it for a souvenir. An investment. So anyway, there you go. Now we have NFTs, non-fungible tokens. Uh, and you can sell a, a song or a part of a song or whatever. Uh, and uh, But there we go. So that's how uh, there were other media that you could do a floppy disk. I don't, you don't know what that is. It's actually a floppy looking square. It's about, uh, I don't have one, but I should get one. I have to get some of that stuff. It's about this size and it's floppy like this. And you put it in a computer that can read it. They're the little SSD cards and, and thumb drives and just on and on and on. Google Drive. So anyway, that's how that that's how that worked. Uh, so uh, write to me if you've ever experienced any of this media or if you if I didn't speak about a part of media you wanted me to speak about, I'll do it. I'll try to bring in some uh, visual aids for the video. Uh, but you can Google all this stuff and learn. It's cool to listen to the history and, and so much. I was uh, reading about the Apollo Command computer. Uh, it was so far ahead of even things we have today. They said, you know, your, uh, your uh, smartphone has 20 times the power, but that's not really true. Uh, there were things it did that computers can't do anymore because it was a built from scratch. And the way it was done, it, uh, it was just fascinating. Uh, the input output was copper wires hand wound through some uh, magnetic rings. And you, they have a picture of a lady winding that sucker uh, because they, they wanted it to be foolproof where nothing could uh, destroy it uh, or anything like that. Google that. That's history's fun to listen to and to go read about. So anyway, here we go. I have had so many people uh, calling in and uh IM, DM, post text, whatever you call it, all those things. Um, you know, how do I, uh, I'm sorry, I dropped something here. How do I succeed in music? How do I succeed to learn an instrument? How do I succeed if I want to be a musician? Uh, and it's the same things if you want to succeed to be an architect or anything else. And I'm fixing to learn you what that is. Uh, here it is. It's three words, and you're going to say, oh, what a letdown. <laughs> but, but stay with me. Here's how it all gets done. You have to, you ready for three words? Do the work. Now, why is that so familiar to you? Everybody says that. But they don't tell you how to do the work. That's important. We teach music, and everybody uh, talks about you know, practice and this and that, but they don't tell you how to practice. They don't tell you exactly how, what you're supposed to do. I'm going to turn this fan on really low. I hope it's not too, uh, too much background noise. Anyway, there's dreamers and doers, and you should be the same person. You have to dream. You have to figure out what you want to do, but then you have to do it. And doing that work, uh, do the work when you're learning, learn while you're working. Learn while you're doing. Don't don't try to go learn everything and then do it. Start at, start immediately. Here's what you should do. You have to research the area that you want to excel at. Do some research. What's it all about? Who's doing what? How are they doing it? 
you need to find like-minded people. So you need to join all the Facebook groups, the Instagram groups, go to gatherings, go to, you know, if you like cars, go to car shows. Uh, see who fixes cars in your area. Go talk to them. Uh, uh, start learning how to fix a car. Uh, you know, can I volunteer here? Uh, you need to shadow intern and volunteer. So if you want to be a doctor, ask your doctor, can I shadow a doctor or a nurse or sit around the office and make copies and see what goes on? Now, these days it's tough because of the pandemic. We're squarely in the middle of it. I realize that. But everybody's going to get uh, vaccinated or inoculated, as we say it in the old country. Everybody's going to do that, and things will open up. You can still learn. YouTube is wonderful. All these uh, uh, visual things. Go and, and see what goes on. And uh, uh, join the Facebook group. Zoom them, you know. Uh, figure out what's going on. Immerse yourself or and volunteer. You know, sometimes not getting paid is the best, it's the most valuable experience. So, you know, you don't want to be taken advantage of, but go volunteer and uh, see what it's like. Immerse yourself in the area. Talk to people in the industry or that has been there, but be careful because you have to look at their situation. Uh, everybody would love their son to be a doctor, except not the doctor that's out of work or the doctor that's an alcoholic or a drug abuser or even worse. Um, you have to talk to people because in music, a lot of people go into a certain area and I'm not going to pick on them. I used to, to say it, but I'm not going to say it. And I wondered why. And, you know, the, the letdown is, well, because you can make money on it. Well, you can make money in anything. You can retire at 30 years of age if you're a teenager, <laughs> uh, if you're underage right now, if you're in high school or middle school, when you're ready to get out into the real world and you can start where you are, I'll, maybe that's my next podcast, how to retire at 30 years of age. It's not hard. It's not rocket science. I hear so many kids giving up. They've given up. Oh, I'm going to go into this thing and this, do that because, you know, I'll be able to retire in 20 years. I'm like, so you're going to waste your, the best years of your life doing something you hate to be where you could have been 10 years before that doing everything you love and then the rest of your life doing everything you love. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But see, people have a, a real damaged sense of self and their, uh, their uh, family and friends have uh, done them a terrible disservice because a lot of them don't know any better and won't go help them find out the truth or they want to see them fail as miserably as they did so they can have some control in their life. And unfortunately, it could be your parents, the nicest people, your friend. They could be doing it not out of malevolence, but because that's all they know. And you have to get your head right. You got to get your mind right, as they say. And you got to, you know, get your, uh, get your, the right attitude and, and take care of yourself. Um, uh, so don't just talk to people and see what they would do or what somebody else would do. Just use that as a way to research and to find out. A lot of people are negative people. And it doesn't matter if they're an attorney, an architect, a, a lawyer, politician, a, whatever. They're going to be negative. So that's, you know, be careful with that. Um, the example I wanted to give is an area that a lot of people want to people to go into uh, they have no they don't care about it uh, but they're, they're thrown in it because they're going to make some money so I did a lot of research and I looked on the blogs and I said there were two kind of those people the ones that were super happy with what they were doing and the ones that were very unhappy and I looked at their comments and I did a spreadsheet and here's the funny thing let's look at the people that hated it they said it's tough to get into it takes a lot of money when you first get into it, you can't get a good job. You have to go to a secondary type institution. You're treated really badly. There's, uh, you're hazed a lot. You are, there's no way to make money or to get uh, uh, better opportunities. You uh, work all hours. There's no way to have a family. There's no way to have a relationships. There's no way to save money because once you become this thing, you have to keep redoing your education and, and so forth. And you're so physically beaten up by the hours and the hazing and the people are very disrespectful because you're coming after their job that it's miserable. People have been in it for, 
one year, 10 years, 20 years, retired, said I'd never t do it again. I wouldn't let anybody else do it. I said, okay, well, that's the people that hate it. Maybe they're haters. So I go on to the people that love it. They said, I love this. I'm helping people, which is good. Tell me about it. However, it's tough to get into. It takes a lot of money. You're hazed when you get into it. There are no good jobs to start with. You're treated like crap. The people don't like you because you're coming after their job. The hours are long. You're always tired. It takes a physical toll. You get injured and sick and ill and die early. There's a lot of alcoholism. There's a lot of drug abuse. Uh, you're always having to go back and relearn. Uh, and the few jobs that are there, like I said, they know you're coming after them. So see, I had to redo, re-look at that. And I did some more research. And I found out that the people that hate it, people that like it, they tell you it's the same. So you have to decide, you know, what are they doing this for? Uh, that's, that's why you need to find out uh, something that you want to do. Start what you're looking at after you've had the least amount of education and start learning as you're doing. Like I said, if you're immersing yourself and stuff like that, then you will get an idea of what it's like. Start a blog or a YouTube channel. Start small and build. Be flexible about your goals and plans. You, you, you know, there's an old song that if you can't be with the one you love, love the one you're with, which I don't agree with. But you don't wait to find your passion to start working. Uh, and don't wait to find your passion and just fill your life up with work. Get work and get your passion and, and let them meld together, you know. Um, I was in a job I didn't like and I've always been an art artist type person and creative, so I started a newsletter, I helped put on parties, I did all this kind of stuff. Uh, and, uh, you know, you, you gotta do what you gotta do, but anyway. Uh, continue to experiment and learn. And along the way, you need to become financially educated and start saving and investing early. Uh, there's the old 50-50 plan, which is when you're a teenager, 50% of all you make, that's the gross, you put it in a bank account and don't ever touch it. Uh, never touch it until you have saved enough money to where half of it you can buy a car with. And then after you've got your car, you don't touch it until you've got half of it will be a down payment on a good house. And then you don't touch it until after that time, from there to there, let's say you buy a house in 10 years, whatever you had in 10 years, however much it grows five years after that, you use only half of that for things. You'll have a huge amount saved. And if you invest it, you'll have even more. So you have to uh, become financially smart and and it's not it's not a mystery okay now you don't have to be a millionaire you know you can be a good middle income person just have you a house and go on a vacation and that's okay uh 50 50 plan save and pay cash buy a small house and fix it up partner with a like-minded person because if your partner doesn't support you and you don't support them forget it that's not going to work uh, there's very few people a very tiny percentage of people go out and make all the income and the partner just does the home stuff, which is very important. The problem is that one that does all that misses out on so much. And if you're both working two jobs and aren't making ends meet, your ends are too big. You need to downsize your house, get rid of your car payment. Uh, all those things old fuddy duddies tell you, just make changes, that's all. I drive it. I don't even drive a car anymore, I drive a motorcycle. I paid one motorcycle off, I'm paying on this one, but I have a car paid off, I have a big suburban truck paid off. Uh, you know, when they get, when they when they break, I take them to a place and he fixes it. And I give him money, but I'm not paying no six, nine hundred dollars a month and then service on that, oh, it's crazy. Uh, partner with a like-minded person. Take a class on how contracts, how insurance and mortgages work. Go right now, Google it, take a class. If you're in school, in college, take a class. Learn about that. You wanna find professionals in these areas, law, finance, medicine, all these other things that know a little bit about your thing. Like if I'm a musician, I'm gonna find a, a, a lawyer that a, either was and is a musician or works in that field, same way with everybody else. If I'm an athlete, I wanna find an athletic doctor. I don't want somebody to say, oh, we'll just rest that for six months. Well, not if you're an athlete, you don't. 
Um, here's how it goes. Here's the flow chart. You, you get into something, you're excited, you're committed, you start working. Pretty soon familiarity sets in. Familiarity breeds contempt and boredom, self-doubt, and then you'll fail. Know you'll have to push through the tough times and just push through. Put your head down. Don't think. Just do. What do I need to do to get from here to there? I need to take 10,000 steps. I'm going to take one and then two and then three. Push through. Now, if you find it's just destroying your life, come back. And you have to do that sometimes, too. You have to uh, take, a, take a pause for the cause. Rethink. Retweak. Change your operation. I've always said if you can't go over the mountain, go around the mountain, go through the mountain, go under the mountain. Sometimes if you'll turn and do exactly the opposite, 180 degrees, you walk far enough, you'll be on the other side of that mountain. Not very efficient, but it doesn't matter. Um, take care of yourself. Don't worry about it's $10, $20. Sometimes that uh, you can save that $10 Starbucks every day and have a nice nest egg, but Getting that Starbucks every day might be the thing that carries you through enough to where you have that one creative thing. If you are creative, you do something and scale it. Do a t-shirt and sell a lot of t-shirts. Write a song, put an NFT where you can keep collecting money on this uh, version and that version, uh, and so forth. So uh, that's my blog for the day. That's a lot of stuff. I might have to go break that into a few of those and do that. And uh, uh, we might have to do some stuff on more contract law and stuff like that. Uh, or do a blog on uh, the ways people used to listen to music. Uh, so I hope you have enjoyed this. Please let me know if there's something I missed or if something didn't make sense or if the whole thing is just stupid. That's okay. If you don't like the way I talk or you don't like my production value, which is just me in my office, and my iPhone and my iPad. If you don't like what I talk about, you want me to talk about something, you tell me. Uh, and we'll uh, we'll talk about it. I'd love to know how your life's going on. Let me hear what's going on in your life. I'd love to hear that. So have a great week. Just remember that this is your life. Go out and get you some of this life. And if you have problems, talk to people. And if all the people you talk to, they just don't care and don't listen to you, get you some new people. And always remember, do everything that's going to help you out. Because if you're not a whole person, you've got nothing to offer anybody else. So this is Tony Underwood, the Music Man, and Quiz the Music Man podcast. And we will see you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.